Here's what they think about you. New Testament quotations from the Apocrypha by Jesus or the Apostles. Jesus and the Apostles didn't believe this was part of the canon. They're not quoted as scripture in the New Testament. Jesus did not recognize the Apocrypha as being... This is five New Testament verses that is quoted from the Apocrypha. Number five, Matthew 6 and 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they shall be heard for they much speaking. Now, where did Jesus get this from? Let's turn to Sirach 7 and 14. Use not many words in the multitude of elders, and make not much uh, babble when thou prayest. Sirach 7 and 14. Number four. Revelations 14, 1 through 4. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name within his, in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as, as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of carpenters harping with their hearts. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man uh, could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, but they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whatsoever he goeth these were re these were redeemed from among men being the first fruit unto god and to the lamb and now they got it from second Ezra chapter 2 42 verse and through 47 i Ezra saw upon the mount zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. In the midst of them was a young man of high stature, taller than all the rest. Upon every one of their heads he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marvel at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, where are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God, now are they crowned and receive palms. Then said I unto angel, What per young person is it that crowned them, and give them palms in their hands? So he answered and said unto me, This it, it is the Son of God, whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so swiftly for the name of the Lord. Three, okay, now we have, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also wood and earth. And uh, I know that in one of the prophet, it talks about like the potter and stuff like that nature, but no, I'm not gonna include that. It says, oh, I just, I'm gonna include these ones that's completely verbatim. It says some to honor and some to dishonor. That's Second Timothy 2 and 20. And I just want to speak of, I'm reading all of this out of the King James Version. Okay, now Romans 9 and 21. Has not the power, power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Now, where did the Apostle Paul get this from? Let's go swing over to Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 7. For the potter, tampering uh, soft earth, fashioned every vessel. Hmm, think about pollen, and it's talking about soft earth, meaning clay. What is clay out of? It's dirt, right? And we think about, like, in the beginning that um, the Most High made Adam from the dirt. I just thought about that. So it says, fashion every vessel with much labor for our service. For our service. Huh? I thought we were supposed to serve him. Anyway. It said, yea, of the same clay he maketh both the vessel that serve for good use and likewise also all such as serves to the contrary. But what is the use of either sort? The potter himself is the judge. 
Number two, if ye now Jesus this now this is Jesus speaking for if ye forgive not man their trespasses passes, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Matthew six and fifteen. Now where did he get that from? One of my favorite books I totally forgot to mention is Sarah, aka Ecclesiasticus. Give thy neighbor the hurt that he has done unto thee, so that thy sins also be forgiven when thy pray. Sirach 28 and 2. Now, last and but not least, we have, for who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? Romans eleven thirty four. Now, where did Paul get this from? I'm going to tell you where. Wisdom of Solomon. For what is he that can cause the counsel of God? Or who can think what the will of the Lord is? Uh, yeah. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 13. So we're just going to conclude our repent sinners. This is the repent, turn, turn away from that mindset and walk in the newness of the Lord. And now uh, if you have any more scriptures, make sure you comment below. But I want to, there is a warning and this is why this is up. Please be advised. All general comments are accepted. If you disagree with something that I say, you have the right to do so. However, if you attack me on the personal level outside of the scriptural and resort to name calling, childish, unspiritual behavior, your comment will be erased and you will be blocked. And also, I will comment before I read you. Anyway, also, if you disagree with something that I teach, that's fine. You have the right to comment about it. But if you make a comment in disagreement and you do not have scripture to support what you're saying, I won't block you, but your comment will be erased because I deal with scriptures and not opinions. Now, scripture. God damn, I'm glad y'all said it all. Now, uh, as I conclude, I want y'all to watch um um this guy right here. Should should we accept the apocrypha? Because at first I was going to copy off of him and put his teaching. He said no. Let them watch it for themselves so you can also be a vice as well. So his name is Tribe of Judah right here. And I want you, I'll make sure I link it in the description bar below. So everybody have a blessed day and I see you next time. Bye.